I'm back home in Britain and back in a place where cannabis is still very much illegal. Having met those young people in California who get away with using cannabis for so-called medical reasons, I'm meeting someone here who would give anything to be in their shoes. Oh, sorry. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright. Right, thanks. Jason, who's 30, is one of thousands of people in Britain who suffer from the debilitating illness, ME. He's had it since he was 10. What are you going through? It's, it's kind of just like living with the worst dose of flu you've ever had in your life, but constantly. That is kind of what it's like day in, day out. Your, your legs literally don't work, and we've added extras like migraines and just not being a normal person. Jason has turned his back on conventional medication because of the side effects. With the painkillers, you've got all the liver failure, you've got the, you know, the possible stomach damage, the kid pancreatitis, all these different things. I was like, well, what do I do? I'm not taking any more painkillers. So someone said to me, have you thought about cannabis? I was like, no, very much not. Why would I? I'm against all drugs. Why would I want to take one of the harmful ones? Mm. But Jason did decide to try it and his symptoms were relieved. Cannabis means life for me, literally life. To avoid using tobacco, which Jason thinks is more harmful, he uses a vaporizer, something I've not come across before. So that's just enough, just to take away a bit of pain, right? And you just put it on to the vaporizer, and you just let it heat up, which then just vaporizes off the THC and the CBD, so once it's done, you just take the tube and you just... So right now, you're actually committing a crime right this second. How does that make you feel? I just, it is really difficult to get your head around that the fact that just sitting here, taking away my pain in the safest possible way that I can, that is breaking the law. Are you prepared to go to prison or are you prepared to... Well. I haven't got a choice. It's as simple as that. I have not got a choice to take my, to take my chances. I can see that Jason really believes that cannabis is the best thing for his pain relief. Unlike some of the people I met in California, I feel that he's for real. But as he's breaking the law, I wonder what his mum and dad think of this. Did he try and keep it secret from you when he first started smoking cannabis? Or? Um, to start with, he didn't actually keep it a secret, but he didn't actually tell us because he knows how much I worry. Did you notice a bigger change yeah, in him yeah, as he did? Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. Yeah. He was nice to see an actual life coming back into him that could perhaps get some normality. But unfortunately, it's against the law. What are we going to do if the police come knocking at the door? <laughs> What would happen, you know, if the police come and raided his room and, and took him away? I mean, that would... Um, I'll go with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not sort of that he's dead, but, you know, I hope it doesn't. Yeah, it's ridiculous it to be know, in yeah. that situation. No, you know, something's helping him, prolonging his life, because the painkillers will kill him. It's his life, and it's not fair that life has treated him the way it has. And he just needs to have some sort of normality. And if this is helping him do it, then I stand by him. You know, if I could take this enemy off him now, I would. Just give him a few days rest. But I thought, yeah, come on. Professor Nutt? Good to see you. I'm James, nice to meet you. I'm meeting Professor David Nutt, one of Britain's leading scientific experts on the effects of drugs, to find out why he thinks cannabis can't be legally prescribed to someone like Jason. I think it's... It's appalling that since 1971, we have not been able to prescribe cannabis for medicinal purposes. Queen Victoria thought it was the most wonderful treatment for childbirth pains, and that's why she had so many children. She swore by cannabis medication. Professor Nutt used to be the government's top scientific advisor on how to classify banned drugs, until this happened in 2009. The government's chief advisor on drugs policy has been sacked after insisting that alcohol and cigarettes are more dangerous than cannabis and ecstasy. It was Professor Nutt's job to provide scientific facts on the harm of drugs. Controversially, he claimed horse riding was more dangerous than taking ecstasy, and that cannabis was one of the least harmful drugs, putting it after alcohol and tobacco. His findings didn't sit well with the government, and he was fired. It's hard to know exactly why I was sacked. I think they probably just got fed up with me telling the truth about drugs and 
pointing out the fact that the current drug laws are actually not based on science and evidence. Cannabis isn't broken down into toxins, so as far as we know, there are no, uh, there's no damage from cannabis itself. It doesn't damage tissues. One of the reasons cannabis is safer than almost any other drug is that no matter how much you take, you do not die. It is never lethal. So if this is true, why does Professor Nutt think the politicians don't want to listen to him? Once a drug's illegal, you cannot have a rational debate about it, with a politician at least. Because illegality puts it in another dimension. Illegal activities, legal activities. You, they say you can't compare them, but of course you have to compare them. The whole process of thinking rationally about drugs was completely disrupted by the last government. I'm just going to ask you outright, what's yeah. the harm? with cannabis. The biggest harm of cannabis at present is the fact you get a criminal record if you're caught with it. And that's why I've been so keen to get the harms in proportion because I think what we, like, the harms of a criminal record are much, much greater than the harms of cannabis to the average person.